Bless you. You should stand up on your feet and give God praise today. He is worthy to be praised. Our Sunday school lesson said today that bigger the challenge, bigger the praise. Did you hear that? The bigger the challenge, the bigger the praise. So if you're going through something right now, you shouldn't be sitting down going, oh, woe is me. You should be on your hands right now making the devil mad, saying, I'm going to praise my way through this today. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise my way through this situation today. Amen. All right, choir. Here we go. Woo. Come on. Yes. Hallelujah. Put your hands on this. Hey. Here we go, Greater Rose. Let's make the devil bad right now. I was down to my last dime, and Jesus stepped in right on time. I showed sure been sick, and I couldn't get well, but he healed my body, and I can tell about it. And he took me in. In all your temptations, he'll keep the faith. He's already planned a way of escape for you. Oh, right now. But I know I'll make it. I make it. In the house, I say that it. Are you going to make it today? 
Is that your testimony for this week? He said he'll be with you in all things. He said, I'll stand there. He said, better yet, I'll go before you and make your way. Hallelujah. That's a praise right there. How many in here got some bills due and they need somebody to go before them? How many in here got something going on at the courthouse and they need somebody to go there before them? Wait a minute. How many got some stuff going on at home that they need God in the house before they get there? Hallelujah. In the house, I say that it. Said I know I'll make, make, make it in the house. Just the moon. Does the moon really give you light? <laughs> or does it appear to give you? Does it give you the image of light? We all know that the enemy's number one strongest attribute is to deceive, deception. Just as the moon appears to give you light, but you're actually still in darkness. But when we accept Jesus into our life, when the sun rises in the morning, <laughs> it says light. It says light not over just you, but everything. Nothing can hide from the light when the sun rises. He is our way. When we enter him into our life, he shows us our path. We no longer are walking in darkness. He is our way. And it says he is the truth. Now, I know y'all are wondering, what does the truth have to do with the light? I know it's a cliche phrase. We all heard it before. They'll say, let us shed a little light on the truth. But picture this, church, being in a room with a glow stick. And it appears to give you light. Yeah, you can see, but what is it missing? It's missing a shadow. But you take some real light. You shed some real light. What does it do? It separates you from your darkness. It shows you your shadow. It shows you the truth about yourself. It's been too many mornings where I done left the house thinking I'm looking just as handsome as ever. But in actuality, my, head is all, my hair is all over my head. And it's not until I enter into the light and okay. see my shadow and my shadow shows me the truth, what I really look like. So he is the truth. And then lastly, he is the life. And they don't teach us a lot of things we should know in school, but our bodies are not made to live without that sun. The vitamins and nutrients that that sun gives us, God made us not to be able to live without it, just as he made us not to be able to live without him or the sun. So before I leave you, I'm reminded of a verse that says, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, For you were once darkness, but yeah. now you are light in the Lord. Yeah. Walk as children of light. Let us walk as children of light. Come on, y'all, give God a hand praise. Give him a hand praise. Amen. We, I, I, and I, I understand. I see what's happening. Y'all were not out of order. You just thought you were doing what you did last Sunday. 
But listen, let me just say this right here. Listen, well, we'll thank God. Get towns and give him another hand. Right. Amen. Yeah. Give him another hand. Amen. I got a feeling that the Lord is yes, sir. showing us something <laughs> before we get it. Amen.
about you. I've tried it over, over, and over again. But I've come to the conclusion that there is no other way that I can make it without you. In other words, in short, I need you, Lord, to help me to make this journey. My success on this journey is not in my hand. I'm not capable of being successful all by myself on this journey. Lord, I need you to help me. I tried other sources, but I've come to the conclusion that there is no other way that I can make it without you, Lord. Ain't you glad that God's always standing by your side? I guess all of the leaders have made their arrival of their closer. Amen. Oh, on today, from the eighth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter number number eight. And I want to begin reading at verse number five. Luke chapter eight and the verses number five. It read like this, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell on by the wayside and it was tottered down and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it, and choked it. And others fell on good ground, and spring up and bad much and bad fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. I want to talk this morning to you for a subject. I, I want to talk about a man the uh, the problem with the soil. The problem with the with the soil, Amen. Say amen. amen. There was a problem, and we want to discuss this problem with Amen. Uh, the soil this morning. Let me make it real plain in the text here. We as God's people, we are the soil, Amen. And the seed is the word of God. Now, we don't have to check the seed out. There's nothing wrong with the seed. Because the seed is the word of God. And God said, my word will never change. Same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And it said that, listen, my word will do as much for Joe as it will for Jack. So there is nothing wrong with the, with, y'all hear what I'm saying? The seed. It, 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 the problem is in the soil. Amen? It's not, amen, the seed fault if the soil is bad. And, and, and we know, amen, if the soil is not right, 
the corn won't grow. We already know that, don't we? That's the reason why, amen, before we plant, we have to prepare uh, the soil. We try to get the soil ready for the good seed. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. So, uh, but in the text this morning, I, I just want to talk about the problem with the, with the soil. Amen. amen. There was nothing wrong with, amen, the seed because the seed, amen, is the word of, of, of God. Amen. amen. Now look at the soil. The soil, amen, was on its way to hell. But because of the seed, the soil now have another chance. Amen. And let me tell you one thing, amen. The soil, listen, when we go out and cultivate the, uh, uh, the soil, amen, we do all of the necessary steps, amen, to the soil that when we plant the seed, amen, that the seed, amen, will grow. And, and, and I want you to know that, listen, uh, we as uh, the soil, uh, God's people, God have, amen, taken every necessary step, yeah. amen, to, that we might be, amen, good soil. Uh, he, he saved us w with his blood, the soil I'm talking about. Yeah, uh -huh. And not only that, but he gave himself, amen. He came back and he dwelled on the inside of the soil. The Holy Ghost lives on the inside of, of the soil. So he, gave, he has given us every tool that we need to be good soil. Yeah. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But amen, out of all that God has done for the soil. Some of the soil still is not productive. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to call it poor soil. Right. I'm just going to say it's unproductive. Yeah. Do, yeah. You, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And, the, and the soil is so unproductive, it really makes the seed look bad. Right. Yeah. But the seed is a good-looking seed. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the seed, amen. It's the, it's the, the soil is, amen, the problem. Greater Rosa Sharon, I'm about done this morning, but listen, we're getting ready. Yeah. We're getting ready, amen, to, uh, uh, to, to lead, amen, uh, God's people through this year. And, 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 and God has gave us everything that we need. And he has promised us everything that we need. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He's the one that told us that he would be with us, that he would not leave us. He told us that he don't sleep, nor do he slumber. He already told us that the battle is not ours. It belonged to him. Yeah. And he's already told us that, that he would lead us the true paths of righteousness. He's already promised that. Matter of fact, David cried out the Lord, if y'all don't believe the book, the Lord is my shepherd, yeah. and I shall not want. Yeah. He have, listen, he have did enough and left enough on record that you and I can be good soil. We already know that things not going to go our way all of the time. No, we already know that, don't we? So therefore, listen, but we know since it's not going to go our way all of the time, but that, listen, we are not in our own hands. We are in God's hands. And when things are not going our way, that's when the Lord picks us up yeah, yeah, yeah. and carry us through. All he wants us to do is be productive. He wants us to be committed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Listen, the effectiveness of the seed. upon the condition of the soil. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with the seed. It's a good seed. And the seed will do its job, amen. But the, con the soil got to be in good condition. So, I admonish the church this morning to let us, as peoples of God, let us as children of God, since we do have a job, and our job is to go ye therefore and make disciples out of men. 
Since we have a job, let us be productive on our job. Listen, don't just handle your job lightly. Your job is important. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I want you to know that, listen, uh, I'm kind of like Paul this morning. For, listen, for me to live is Christ. Do you understand what I'm saying? And to die is gain. You see, if I died out of this world, that's what Paul said, it's gain to me. I ain't got to go through no more stuff. But if I don't die out for me to live, it's Christ. Otherwise, my conversation, if I live, is Jesus Christ. How he hung, bled, and died, I don't care for it. So, Scripture says in the text here, a soul went out to sow some seed. And as he sowed some, fell by the wayside, and it was trotted down, and the fowls of the air, y'all hear what I'm saying, devoured it. And according to verse number, we're looking at verse number six, but uh, five, but according to verse number 12, amen, it said the meaning of verse number five, look at verse number 12. Y'all got your Bible, just look at it. Verse number 12 says, those by the wayside are they that hear, watch this now, then cometh the devil and taketh away the word of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. Listen, the devil, listen, he don't want you to have no word in you. Because he knows, listen, if you fill yourself up with God's word, right. you have a better chance of defeating him. Yeah. So the devil, whenever you hear the word of God, see, the devil wants to come and snatch the word of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? From you. Those that fall on the wayside. Let me, let me describe them like this. Those are the ones that don't get a good understanding of the word of God. You don't have a right understanding of God's word. So you can, you, if you don't have a right understanding of God's word, you're going to do some wayside thing. <laughs> By the way, they don't tell me what you'll do. If you don't have a good understanding of God's word, and that was some of us, we run, we take off before we get an understanding. And as a result of not having an understanding, the devil can shake you and do whatever he want to do with you. Some of us get mad and go home before we get an understanding. And sadly as it is, we think we are doing the right thing. But the devil, the devil is ready to destroy you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let me say that the wayside, some, listen, the seed was good, but according to the text, listen, they fell, some of the seed fell by the wayside. Wayside soil. Wayside soil will go anyway. Listen, let me ask you a question. If God have made a law, auxiliary that you have a law, why do you debate doing obeying the law? Yeah. Why? So listen, we listen. There is no problem with the with the seed. The problem is is the the soil, yeah. because whatever God's word the seed means to me, it means the same thing to you. Amen. So some of us, amen, uh, we, we don't have an understanding of God's word, and we operate. And I want you to know we're talking about light. Watch this right here. Knowledge is light to a child of God. The Bible said my people are destroyed for a lack of what? Knowledge, amen. So let's find ourselves a uh, in Sunday school, let yeah. they make make ourselves present in Bible study. Yeah. 
Because I, I, I really, when you get ready to ask the question on Sunday morning, I really ain't got time to stop and answer your question, amen. But I promise somebody will stop in Sunday school. This might be a long sermon. <laughs> Verse 5 says, Some fell by the wayside, amen, and were trotted down and defiled. The devil devoured it. Some fell up on a rock, and as soon as it sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell up on a rock. Listen, some of us, amen, I was hard, even though we're saved. We have rock hard saw, hearts. Do you understand what I'm saying? The word of God, some of our hearts are still have not got soft. And without a lack of understanding of the word, pretty much your heart going to be hard. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They on the rock are they which when they, listen, hear, receive the word with joy. Then these have no root. Oh, for which for a while believe. And in time of temptation, they fall away because there's no moisture. The, the, the seed fell up on uh, the stony ground, the, 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 the stony soil. And how many of you all know, amen, that, listen, they had a normal, non-saving faith. In other words, some of us, amen, some people only operate now, y'all hear what I'm saying? On emotional commitment. Emotional commitment. Do you understand what I'm saying? Other words, cause and how I feel. I'm committed. Cause and how what you say about me. And my dedication is based on my emotion. That's bad soil. Good seed. But there's something wrong with the soil. You understand what I'm saying? Listen, let me tell you one thing. God said, that, listen, that's not my doing. Listen, if I'm, if I'm saying I'm with you today, I'm with you to tomorrow. And, and, and we got to know one thing. Listen, your emotion should not control your commitment and dedication to Christ. Ah. Jesus said, now listen, your mind is in the wrong place. I done already told you what to think on. Things that are holy. Things that are lovely. Things that are of good report. Things that are godly. Uh -huh. I done told you where you had your mind at. But some of y'all hard, oh, amen, you cannot control your mind. Sir, the flesh have too big a hold on you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, but the Lord is saying this morning, listen, uh, we're looking at the amen, the, the, the saw this morning, uh, some of us, amen, is emotional saw. And emotional saw, they don't tell them why it wind, wind up tomorrow. Do you understand? Emotional saw, it just, it, 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 listen, whenever a little wind come through, yeah, yeah. because the saw is not settled, it's emotional. Whenever a wind come through, yeah, yeah. you hear what I'm saying? It blows the dust. And then we're not mighty careful of the soil is, is the dust we blows us away. So all the things that I'm saying, some of us, whenever a little wind come through, y'all, yeah. you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, we are, we, we, we fall in the wind. But let me tell you one thing. Listen, if you're flip-flopping every time you turn around, let me do it this way. If the leader of the auxiliary is flip-flopping, what do you expect the body to do? Am I making any sense? Now, this is just not for the auxiliary. This is just not for leaders. Some of you all might need to eat some of this food. 
Do, do, do you understand what I'm saying? This, 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 listen, the, the soil, amen, you know, some of us are emotional soil. Then, then it says some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Listen. Just because you are saved, and the word of God is being preached and teached and taught to you, it's not to say that you are exempted from the wiles of the devil. Do you understand what I'm saying? Every time God plant one seed, the devil turn around and try to plant another seed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just don't think just because you are you are saved and being and just going to Bible study and Sunday school, don't think the devil won't throw some dots at you. You hear what I'm saying? Listen, some fell among the thorns, and some thorns have sprang up with it and choked it. Listen, let me tell you something. Some of us, without an understanding, we will not be able to handle the things of this world. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? If, if, if you don't get an understanding of God's word, you're not going to be able to handle the things that this world has to offer you. You, you, you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because God has offered you on one hand the blessings of life. Then the devil have painted some stuff up over here and made it look good to you. And that's a question of life. And if we that type of soul, that we're not mighty careful. Amen. We'll find ourselves swaying to the thing, amen, of the world. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Listen, God said now, don't be distracted by sideline distractions. Do you understand me? Listen. The devil is so wise, he's not going to show you anything more as long as he got you going the way he wants you to go. He don't have to show you nothing tomorrow if he got you going the way he wants you today. But when the devil starts showing us stuff, it's when we are trying to follow the Lord. That's when he will present some sideline distraction. And we got to be the kind of soul that won't twist and break our neck looking and trying to see all of the stuff on the left hand side. I need you to know the grass is no greener. The grass is no greener on the other side. Yeah. If the truth is told, your grass is pretty green. Yeah. Might have to run some water on it. <laughs> the reason why it's been dried up is because you ain't wanted it. So the only thing that, that, that I'm saying is don't be fooled by sideline distraction. The Bible says some fail. Then look at verse number 8. In verse number 5, it says some fell by the wayside. In verse number 6, it says some fell upon a rock. And then number 7, it says some fell among the thorn. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be numbered in the sun. Do you understand what I'm saying? You look at verse number five, six, and seven. It says some fail. But thank God, all of them did not fall. Do you understand what I'm saying? There, listen, was some. The Bible said in verse eight and others on good ground. Listen, I want to be in the other category. Do you understand what I'm saying? The good ground category. That's where God wants us to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's the reason why, listen, when, and don't be discouraged. Missionary, Papa, don't be discouraged. All of us supposed to be missionaries. 
Well, when you call a mission meeting yeah. out of the whole church, yeah. you got five or six to show up. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the some. It's the others that show up. They're making this sense. Amen. Why? The psalm won't show up. But the others will show up. How oh, shucks. Ushers. The psalm won't show up. But the others showed up. And I want you to know if God be with the others, he can keep the church afloat with the others. Other way, the only thing I'm trying to say is that, listen, you're a part of the ministry. But the ministry will not die if you don't show up. It won't die. It will not die without your presence. It might slow down a little bit. But the ministry is not going to die because... You are not here. You are not showing up. So, Brother Rose and Sharon, to listen to those of us who are in office. Listen, don't you be the problem. Don't, don't you be the problem. God have already gave you everything you need to be good soil. So you need to be productive this year. Oh, I know you'll have a headache. But listen, my thing is this. If you can work eight hours with a headache, you ought to be able to stand two hours in church with a headache. Am I making any sense in here? <laughs> if you can get through an eight-hour day, you understand what I'm doing, 10 hours? If you can get through your day, amen. You hear what I'm saying? With a bad hair day. You know how you say I'm having a bad hair day. If you can make it on your job with a bad hair day, you ought to be able to stand two hours in God's house. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The only thing that I'm saying is listen, the seed, there's nothing wrong with the seed. The, because the seed is the word of God. The problem was the soil. You hear what I'm saying? The soil. Listen, and you and I, we still might have rock hard hearts, but it's not because we have not heard the word of God. You read the word of God. You been taught the word of God. You know the word of God. So therefore, your heart ought to be soft by now. now. Because verse number 8 says, since some fell on good ground, and it sprang up and bears fruit a hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried out, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit have to say to the church. Yeah. Getting ready to sit down, Greater Rose. But listen, all of us don't have a ear to hear. And we don't want to hear what God has to say to us. But I found out that you would be further down the road if you don't want to hear what the Lord has to say to you. You would be further down the road if you would not be a part, a fake part of the ministry. Can I get a witness? God needs somebody that he can depend on. God needs somebody that's not stuck on their own emotion. The Lord needs somebody who has made up in their mind that they're going to run on and see what the end is going to be. As I get ready to sit down right now, uh, hold on. Lead us to God's unchanging hand. It's not going to be easy always. Uh, 
But I'm so glad. I say I'm so glad. When my burden get heavy, I've got a burden bearer. When my way get dark, I've got a light unto my path. Oh, when my road get rougher, I've got somebody that will carry me over my rough road. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. To one of these old days, Oh, when it's all over down here, you're going to hear God say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Don't you want to hear him say, Well done? If you want to hear him say, Well done, let me hear you say, Yeah. Say, Yeah. Ah, yes. I want to hear him say, Well done. Well done. Well done. God says, you ought to be able to make it. You ought to be able to get through. You ought to be obedient to my word. Look what I've done for you. I let my son come. I, I let my son come. He was at home in my presence. But when I looked at you. I had compassion on him. So I let my son come. I allowed my child to leave my presence and come down and walk among you guys for 33 years. Not only that, but I allowed my child that you might have life to go to Calvary and die in your place that you might have joy. And since I did all of that for you, you ought to be good soil. You ought to be some good soil. Listen, let me tell you something. Good soil. Good soil. It's the kind of soil that work with soil. Good soil is the kind of soil that help soil. Good soil is the kind of soil that supports soil. Good soil is the kind of soil that come together that God might get glory out of the soil. Good soil is the kind of soil that bring glory and honor to God. Good soil is the kind of soil that God has said that ye are the light of the world. Good soil is this kind of soil that is the salt of the earth. Good soil is the kind of soil that fellowship with other soil. Good soil. That's a good soil. Leaders, y'all ought to be able to come together and work together. There's one thing about it. Every leader needs the prayer of the other leader. It might be your day. You might be flying high today. But I can promise you one thing. If you don't have compassion on your sister who's in the same ministry, you might as well get ready to fall because your day is coming. So let us be the type of soil that when the seed is planted in us, that the seed will be productive. Be good soul. Amen. There may be someone here that have not accepted Christ as your Savior. If you're here today and don't have the Lord in your life, if you're just tired of being stony soul, you can be good soul. If you have not accepted Christ, you can be saved today if you can believe that he died and God raised him from the dead. If there be one, will you come?